Mental health is a health public concern. And for my guest today, losing a friend after graduation, being jobless for the longest time, and also losing a seat during election got him depressed. And if we talk of depression, I believe he's the right person to share with us. For full details, stay tuned. Hi, Peter. Yes. Thanks so much for creating time for us. Kindly introduce yourself and tell us what exactly happened. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Peter Nganga Omoku Dairo from Kiambu, Kabete County. Um, I was born and raised in both Nairobi and Kiambu. Uh, I made it to the university back in 1989. And uh, immediately after completion in 1992, we used to go one year before graduation. In between that period, I had an accident, me, my friend, and his girlfriend in a nuclear place called Timau. Uh, the girlfriend lost her life. And uh, it was during this, 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 this period that I started wondering and I, I started fearing there is, there, is, there is something that is not right with my life because immediately after that, when I was hospitalized and in the confusion because I had a head injury, I, I lost two interviews with the public service and uh, I was unable to pursue the public service any, any mu much after that. And then that's when I was now recruited into Christianity, deep Christianity, because of now the fear of death and the, the, the fear of uh, having life internal, because I saw maybe I could have died and gone to hell or something like that. So I got into a Christian ministry where I worked as a subordinate staff for three years. And uh, it's very embarrassing being a graduate and uh, you meet your friends, you're a driver, you're in uniform, and uh, you, you can't justify your case to them. To you inside, you're trying to justify it as uh, salvation, humility, and, uh, and also submission, so that God can open up the ways later. And uh, the funny thing is that in that same, same ministry, we were thrown out. Uh, they decided to cut down the, the, the staff, and it was because of some sin or some misbehavior from the, from the pastors that the, the, the ministry came down and the sponsors from the United States cut off their, 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 their sponsorship. What exactly did they do? The, there was an, uh, uh, an adulterous relationship between a pastor and one of the praise leaders. So the, 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 the ministry came down. Uh, we were thrown out of the cold without even a one month notice or anything. So coming out into the cold, I tried to survive a bit. By this time I'm married, I have two children. My wife had not been working, but immediately I lost my job, she got a job. And now I'm, I'm, I'm hustling in quotes in the village and in town, I'm getting one or two shillings here and there. And then I got a scholarship to go to Kampala. That was in uh, 2001. I completed my, 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 my diploma, postgraduate diploma in environmental journalism and communication. I came, I came back to Kenya. Um, when I came back to Kenya, I was introduced to a certain person in, uh, in the media who was supposed to help me when I write stories, environmental stories, they are printed. So they printed my five stories and I was never rewarded anything. So I decided I won't be doing jobs for nothing without pay. And so I decided to go now privately. So I was, I was employed by somebody at the airport. I helped them in their jobs. And uh, somebody who that I, I had assisted while in that company got me a job at PZ Carsons. At PZ Carsons, I became a transporter. I was able to grow to the level of a fleet of seven vehicles. And it was during this success that all of a sudden I lost goods worth over seven million. And I was told to pay the goods worth or the goods themselves and you're given 15 days. So I sold all my vehicles. I was unable to raise that money. So even uh, up to date, I still have a few debts here and there from individuals, but the major banks and all that and the company itself, those ones are cleared. 
And uh, it was after this that uh, the people around me started telling me that I should vie for a political seat at, at Kabete Sub County as a member, as a, and as an MCA, member of county assembly, Kiambu. And uh, I was being given reasons as uh, during in university days, I was a member of the leadership of Kiambu Students Association. Uh, we had very many initiatives of even volunteering to train in, sc in uh, schools, give free tuitions. We used to meet Moy at Kabarak. So people thought that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good person to lead them. Uh, though the finances weren't enough, now having come out of a financial crisis, I decided to go to, with, with the smaller parties, but affiliated to Jubilee. Uh, with the wave of Jubilee, it was suit all the way down. And even though people had told me that I was the chosen one, pastors were telling me there cannot be any other, I'm the anointed one, I'm the one who's chosen, they feel it in their spirit, they feel it everywhere. Come the day of the election, it was a shock because there are even some polling stations where I got even three votes. The people and who- And you used to campaign? We campaigned a lot. There was, there was expenditure, a lot of expenditure in printing, in media, uh, visiting homes, churches, giving offerings. I'll cut you short. Before, before, before you ventured into politics, is it something that you, you had in, uh, uh, aspired to or uh, you were just pushed into? I can really not put a finger onto it, but... Now, now with the background, I told you that I had this leadership thing in the in the university. Uh, I had interests, so many. My, I was interested in politics. I used to follow everything in politics. But I don't think I had come to that level where I really wanted myself to join the politics because I wanted, a, a, if I was going to join politics, I was going to be stable financially and everything. And when I joined politics, is a way of giving back. But this time, it came as both a job opportunity and also a career. And uh, so when I, 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 I fell on my face uh, and all those people who had been supporting me and who have been telling me of how I'm chosen and everything, they all disappeared. And now they went to the other side. Now, people think, kind of think that uh, when you plunge into these things, they think you're a very loaded person financially. That's the reason why you ingia kwa siyasa. Kumbe, you, you are desperate. And this is an opportunity for you. Even though you want to serve and help, it's also a, a place where you can change your living also. Yeah. Yeah, because you, you'll, be, you'll be having a reward every month for the work done. But uh, to my surprise is that my money went. I never got any positions. Some people who did not even, who had not vied, got positions in the government, jobs, you know, marketplaces, uh, in the city council, charging parkings and all that. Some people got vibaruas. Me, I didn't. But then these same, same guys were to approach me later and tell me that I should vie for the speaker position in Kiambu. During the voting time, the mm. voting period, mm. uh, being, before, uh, you had a number that convinced you that you, 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 you'll take that seat? Mm. No, I, I, was, I was being told the whole area, everybody is just talking about me. There's nobody else they're talking about. Because this other guy had, uh, was an, a, a church person who was not very vocal and everything, who was not very much known. Little did I know that uh, it was about party, which party nominated you. It was not about who you are and your background and whatever your education or anything. It was Jubilee and it was Jubilee which was sweeping all the seats. Little did I know that you need to really, really know where the network is, where you have to be aligned to who in order to win and in which region and at what time. So me, I thought when you're called of God, this is a walkover. So to my shock, now this thing brings you a depression because 
you had dreams before you vied. You had a projection that I'll be this, I'll be that, and you're already now uh, feeling like a Moheshimiwa. And even people are calling you Mohesh. And they are calling you for every small harambe, for every meeting, for any burial you're being told to address people, even after the elections. They are, they are still, even up to today, I'm still called Mohesh. And some call me MCA. So this thing about being, and then you're not able, and you are, you are a prisoner of everybody. Because when you go to a restaurant, people are like, Mohesh, Nunu Akitu. Eh? Mohesh, bana, you've taken so long. You, nowadays, you are Nunu Ibana. Eh? So you feel like you're a prisoner to people that you, everybody, you have to cough. Because I, I, was, I intended to vie again in 2022 before I, I had uh, a revelation that um, I don't have to. I, I'm, not, I'm not bound to, to politics. And, and common sense is telling me that I should not. So I decided not to. And uh, that's when I started recounting and seeing the failures and the, and the misses that I had made. And uh, let me talk about, when did you, did you realize that you are losing that seat? Uh, losing that seat is, uh, I, up to the last minute, up to even the, the, the telling, I still thought I was, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I was the top. So there was a place called Mogoga where the, the Tallinn Center was towards uh, Limuru on the highway. There's a school called Mogoga Gatonya. That's where the main Tallinn Center was. Mm -hmm. So we went there at midnight, awaiting for the final. You know, the, the MCAs are done at the county and announced at the county. So we were waiting over there and then they, uh, they announced that uh, the first guy had uh, 7,000 something. So when they announced that, I just went home. I didn't even want to know the rest because I knew the number of voters were around 12,000. And so they said 7,000 and 5,000 for the second guy. I, I, up to date, I don't even know how many I made because I didn't even have enough agents for every station. And uh, after that, I hid. And you, I remember you told me that uh, when, uh, when you went for, for a voting queue, you just got, you found, you found yourself alone with your son. Yes. <laughs> and, you can, and, and you can also remember that uh, this son of mine, a year prior to this, my son had an accident. Immediately after I was attacked by thugs at my home, and that made me move from my home. You were attacked? Yeah, by th criminals at night. That is uh, prior to the voting? Yes, or? it was even prior to my company going down. Mm -hmm. A year prior to that, they attacked me, I think because they used to see many vehicles coming in and out of my place, so they thought I, there must be a lot of money inside. I was uh, transporting for a certain company goods to various stations all over Kenya. So I was attacked and we moved out because they came twice. So when we moved out, a month after, my son visited the grandfather at the same place. When they were, he was helping the workman cut down a tree, the tree fell on his head and his head cracked. Mm -hmm. And it, he was actually pronounced death by the villagers. But actually, I think he was in shock, but he was forming. So he was rushed to Aga Khan. Uh, he was operated on that night. Uh, he had a hemorrhage inside the head, costing me an, again another 1.5 million. Uh, so all these things cumulatively, the failure, the accident, the lost lack of job, the humiliation, the different counsel. You know, you are, you are counseled by different people. The preacher tells you, you don't tithe. You don't pray. You don't give your offerings. Somebody else tells you, you didn't fulfill cultural stuff of uh, our culture. Somebody else tells you, you're bewitched. Somebody else tells you there must be very many people who are jealous of your success, your education, your everything, your whole family, your success in business. So there are people who are fighting you. So all these things cumulatively, and you're also listening to media, you're also Googling many things. All these things, when they, they, they jam your head, uh, it's, it's like there is a crisis in your head. 
and that crisis, you don't know how to get out of it. It's like there is a, a, a power that now holds your brain that you, you think I'm, I'm, I'm a black sheep, maybe I'm, 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 I'm never supposed to have, maybe I'm under a curse, maybe I'm really bewitched, maybe I did something wrong somewhere. So you try recounting all those things. So in the, in the, in the process, you, you don't know how to get out because you've prayed, you've fasted, you've given, you've repented, you've visited the cultural people, they have told you of the steps that you need to do for a man to be a true Kikuyu man. You've tried all those, they are not working. So it's the failure. You wonder now, are you, are you alone in this? Are you, or am I the devil or what? Because everything seems to be going negative. So at this point is when now depression hits you. You start wondering, what's the use of living? How deep did you get into depression? Deep, as deep as uh, one would get because I think I started abusing substance, alcohol, and this time you cannot, uh, you cannot afford the good drinks. So it's anything that is available. Sometimes showering is a problem. You don't want to meet people. Uh, you're not eating night properly. This, this happened now after losing election. After losing election is now when I recounted everything, almost from my birth, <laughs> all the hardships I've gone through. And, and, and the conclusion was uh, I was born to suffer. And uh, everybody, now started, I, everybody now started behaving like, like I don't belong. People are avoiding me. People who used to visit me are not visiting. Nobody's there. My family had gone out of the country. I was all alone in the house because now they had to go look for greener pastures because their head was not earning anything. So I'm, I'm left alone and I'm depressed and there's no one to hold my hand. My parents are old, they wouldn't understand. People think the guy is pretending. Oh, the guy is just a loser. The guy is he's a graduate and he doesn't even know how to use his education. Uh, the, those, those kind of stories. So that depression took me until one day, and I can't remember who really told me this. He told me all this thing is in your head. It's been your, it's, it's your imagination. And what, what did you used to experience uh, at night? I used to experience some forces coming with great force and entering my body. And then from that time, I am tormented and tormented and tormented up to the morning. And in the morning, I would feel it leave. <laughs> what kind of torments <laughs> you used to get? Torments as in you're being held, you can't scream, you can't cry out. Like you cannot even pronounce the word Jesus because that's the one that uh, now in your, in, your, in your faith, you believe that if you call upon this name, you'll be set free. Mm -hmm. That name can't even come out. You're mumbling things. I'm fearing to sleep and I'm fearing to switch off the lights. And if I keep the lights on, it's an accumulation of electricity bill. So I bought two big candles that I used to leave on at night because when, when, when the light is on, I was less scared. So it went on like this and uh, I would put a Bible under my bed I think all those things helped me come out of it slowly because I would believe there is the power. And then I would pray. I would try sometimes and take sleeping pills so that I sleep because the night was the worst. During the day it was okay and I was normal during the day. If not for the drinking and maybe the roughness, everything else was fine and nobody could tell. People would just tell that I'm broke I'm jobless, but they wouldn't tell that there are things that are affecting me. All those things were private and at night. So, but the only big question that I keep asking up, up to to date is that uh, because there's a f an individual friend of mine who later comes into my life and uh, who has moved along with me in life throughout, who comes later and tells me that he was involved in some uh, black magic and uh, that uh, I'm, the, I'm, I'm the one who had left a window open in my life. 
and uh, this person has been with me for over 40 years. So now uh, the person I think after the things, I know is telling me that these things reverse to the person who had started them. So I think when the things started reversing to him is when now he wanted to come and confess to me so that they can cease attacking him. Mm-hmm. And the only thing I could do is to cut off the friendship. So he came and confessed to you that he was he is the one who bewitched you. Yes, that he, he but but he didn't put it directly. He told me that he had gone to some to some uh, this we <laughs> what do you call them? Which doctor? Which doctors? And uh, presented his case. I don't know which case it was. And they advised him that whatever he can get of his suspects. Mm-hmm. He takes it to those guys, so they did their whatevers, and it was later deposited at the river, at, uh, at the river. And he was told very soon, you're going to see your, your victims collapsing one by one. So he, the only thing he told me is that you must have left a window open on your side. That's why those things affected you. So I don't know which window I left open, whether it's a window of success or it was the window of... I don't know. So, Peter, as we conclude, because I understand right now we are in that uh, uh, political mode where we have those one who did not manage to clinch a seat. Mm. Uh, probably they could be suffering mm-hmm. just as the way you suffered. Yes. Uh, what can you advise them or what can you tell them? Being that uh, uh, they also had a ambition the way you had. Yeah, yeah. And, and probably, unfortunately, they couldn't uh, get there whatever they were expecting. What can you tell them? The only thing I can tell them is that they should realize that there is nothing wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with uh, their life. There's no curse in their life or anything. There may be no, it not even be a person who is attacking them. The real reason why they did not make it is that they were not in the right position. They never allied, they never positioned themselves properly. Politically, realistically, logically, yeah, and even maybe financially, to be in position to clinch these positions. Because, for example, if if you had vied for a political seat in in the mountain region, and you had vied through the Azimio, you don't expect to, to win, whether you prayed, fasted, or did whatever you did. Because even I think God also expects you to use common sense and to read the times and to be really tuned to the frequency of the area that you are in, the political frequency, the alignment of, 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 the, of the times that you are in, and to really learn. You can see that there were people who were in, on the other side, but sensing that that side will not win, they moved to the other side. And these are the people who know politics. Uh, our governor was on the other side, Kiambu, and now he went to Kenya Kwanza and he clinched the seat because he read the times. He read the times and uh, he did not... In Kenya, you don't say that you're, you're in this party permanently. You go to the side that you know that is winning and you do all that you can to clinch that seat through that side. And if you fail in the nominations, do not try to come back again uh, so as, uh, as we close, uh, um, you told me that you've recovered from depression. Yes. And you are now getting back to your feet. Yes. Uh, one word for those, those who are in, in depression. Uh, depression does not come in a day. And depression does not live in one day. It is step by step. Like they say, glory to glory. Uh, one day at a time. You go taking a step every day, a, a step into, into, into healing every day, a step into realization, a step into, into recovery and healing. Because you start healing your brain before you heal your pocket. Because you cannot heal your pocket before you heal your brain. So the job part will come after you. You have really settled down your brain and now you're focused and you're in control. So first you work on your balance of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you, you, you become sober. 
you 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 are you are stable you stabilize your brain by realizing that uh, there's nothing outside there that is affecting you everything that is fighting you is inside you so you fight that which is inside you the, this is the deception the lies the many voices the many advices you take your own stand and you you make up your decision that you're going to take control of your your own self and now from there you'll start recovering because you first have to accept that you're sick and you need help mm, true. Yes, yes. thanks so much peter and Thank thanks you. for creating time for us yes as from what you've picked i i believe for me what i've picked that always learn to see what is right for your mind till next time i'm your host jael musumba <laughs>